is a rising star at Fox, and it's just a, an honor, privilege, pleasure, everything good to know Pete Hegseth. And as okay. I said, God willing, we'll be there in February. And the last time we were there was an amazing trip that you put together. Uh, seeing is understanding, is fortifying, is, is being able to fight back against the fake news and the things people want to say about Israel and the Jewish state in real, in, as opposed to what is reality on the ground. Uh, we're going to do it again. And it's going to be, we've got a great list of folks coming to it. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, we're going to get, get there. And hopefully the President of the United States will have moved, uh, the embassy or at least came, uh, coming will have come very close to have moved the embassy, uh, at least declared Jerusalem as the eternal capital of the Jewish people, which no president has ever done in 70 years of Israel's existence. So what do you have to say about that? I knew you Yeah, we interviewed, we interviewed uh, Governor Huckabee on the program this morning. He made that very same point. Uh, it is the eternal and undivided capital of the Jewish state. There's no reason why the United States hasn't recognized that and shouldn't. And the thing about President Trump is he made it a central plank of his campaign. It was a promise that he made. And, and one thing we know about the, what this president has done, he's gone to Washington. Uh, despite all his critics and all the fake news and everything they've tried to do to impugn his character, he said, I'm going to do what I was elected to go do. So I would be more surprised if he didn't make this move ultimately to, to move the embassy uh, to Jerusalem. Uh, and it would be a huge symbol to the rest of the world of where we truly stand with Israel and a very welcome one. So I'm, I'm crossing my fingers like you that the next couple of weeks we'll see that. Yeah, well, hopefully even this week. Yeah. Uh, the president uh, is on Wednesday, it, yeah. I think, is going to announce uh, some declaration, which is going to rock the world, I yeah. think, uh, yeah. which, thank God, I mean, it's about time. Um, it's well overdue. But, but, you know, it sends much more uh, than just a symbolic message. Um, Israel has been fighting for its survival from day one, and now 70 years fighting for its survival. There is never, not a day that goes by that someone isn't trying to hurt the state of Israel, whether it's BDS or whether it's Including terrorists. today with Iran and, and working with Assad and exporting new territory to try to create a land bridge and get as close as possible to Israel. I mean, it's an ongoing reality that from Baghdad to Damascus to that entire region, uh, Iran seeks the destruction of that state. Uh, we're, we're, I mean, it's death to America and death to Israel. We're in this together. And it is, it's happening right now under our nose. And some of the people that we've supported in that region have uh, tacitly allowed Iran to expand their influence even more, which is a huge, huge problem, having stood on the border and under Understanding the precarious, na the, the ge geographic precarious nature nature of that of this country, uh, so it's ongoing. Every single day, that existence has to be fought for, and this is an important step to show the world that we really do you're care. You're referring to our time in, Gol in the Golan Heights. That's right. That's right. Okay. So where we could was... see ISIS-controlled territory from where we were standing, uh, and, bombs in, going off. and bombs going off as well. If America had a missile coming across the border from either Canada or Mexico, you you, you better believe that they're going to do something major offensively to to take it out. Absolutely, not just to mention uh, Canada or Mexico, but look at North Korea. I mean, this is a country on the other side of the Pacific that's trying to possess these weapons, and we're talking about an existential threat to our very existence and some very drastic actions, potentially, that could have huge ramifications both conventionally and in a nuclear sense. So when a country is truly threatened with, you know, we talk about the EMP threat or anything else, these sort of ideas that the mainstream sees as, as uh, unlikely, but if you actually look at the issue set, you realize our worst enemy enemies will use the worst weapons of the world if they can to bring us to our knees. America's unfortunately waking up to that with the threat of North Korea, something that, it, that Israel has dealt with. With a neighbor, uh, it's much like the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. I mean, when they're right off your shores, you have to do something about it. Uh, and, and that's what we're reminded about with Israel every day. Thank you so much, Pete Hegseth, Bet Dell Dinner, 2017. Thank you.